A retro diving helmet appears. A pickaxe flies into the picture. Question marks appear above the helmet. Exploration explained. Students talking about deep sea mining. Episode 8. Exploration techniques. Hi everyone! Welcome to this video of Exploration Explained, students talking about deep sea mining. In this video we will talk about exploration techniques that are used to explore the deep sea environment, as well as the machinery that is used to extract the deep sea resources. We hope you enjoy the video. A cross section of the ocean is drawn. Beneath a wavy sea surface is a heterogeneous seabed that deepen stepwise to form three planes at different water depth. On the upper two levels, all bearing deposits are indicated by a thin grayish layer above the seabed. Even though the extraction of deep sea resources, the real deep sea mining, has not yet properly started and many states are only in the exploration phase, the technology for deep sea mining is available. When the Regulating Mining Code by the International Seabed Authority, as explained in a later episode by Professor Mats Lück, a photograph of Professor Mats Lück, is in place, deep sea mining is likely to start as soon as possible. Mining in the deep sea is extremely difficult and poses major challenges for the mechanical engineers who develop the techniques. The first constraint is the process of mining underwater via remote control from the surface plus the huge depth and high water pressure. A mining vessel is drawn on the sea surface and beneath an ROV is drawn on the deepest of the three planes. The text next to the ROV reads about 4000 meters, about 403 bar, polymetallic nodules. The second is the diversity of mining sites, as the deposits may be located at different depths with different temperature and pressure or on different parts of the seabed with different slope, inclination, curve, sediment type and the machines need to be strong enough to withhold these changes. One of the ore-rich layers at a depth of about 2500 meters is labeled seafloor massive sulfites. The second layer on the shallower plane at a depth of about 1500 meters is labeled cobalt crusts. Text Mentioned depth are average numbers in which the greatest abundances of deposits are found. Depending on the resource that is mined, different techniques are applied. Compared to polymetallic nodules and massive sulfides, cobalt crusts are so technologically difficult to mine due to their close attachment to the bedrocks and the necessity of dividing bedrock and ore that extraction techniques don't exist yet for this resource. Theoretically, they could be collected by large remotely operated vehicles ROVs, that grind through the hard crust, creating a mixture containing the valuable minerals, which would then need to be piped to the surface. On the cobalt crust deposit, an ROV with a robotic arm equipped with a circular blade is drawn. In any regard, mining in the deep sea is not only difficult, but also very expensive. Only the exploration costs 50,000 to 100,000 euros a day, and exploitation would be much more. The main technical challenges lie in the collection and pumping of the ores from the seafloor, because of their differences to terrestrial mining, and therefore the need to develop new technologies. To extract the resources, two techniques can be used. While sulfides need to be dug out, nodules are simply collected or harvested. Small black stone-shaped polymetallic nodules appear in front of the ROV at 4000 meters depth and pile up at the front of the vehicle. To bring the ore to the surface, two main vertical transport systems have been developed as part of various research and exploration projects. The support vessel lowers a tube-shaped riser down to the ROV. The airlift system and the hydraulic system. The deeper the deposits, the more complex the vertical transport system. In the airlift system, compressed air is injected into the riser, which, by changing the water's density, pushes the metallized slurry up to the surface. As compressed air is forced down the tube, the metallized slurry can make its way up to the surface. This technique has already been tested for polymetallic nodules at water depths of around 4,500 meters. 
In addition, hydraulic systems are considered to be simple, reliable, and highly effective in pumping ore to the surface. The required systems already exist, as the same hydraulic pumps are already used for oil and gas drilling in deep waters. For manganese nodules, you can say that they are readily available and can be collected from the seafloor through an ROV. This would function like a vacuum cleaner, without having to be dug out. As the nodules lie scattered on relatively soft sediment, heavy vehicles cannot be used as they would sink down. The main challenge here lies in the fact that nodule deposits are located at great depth. This means using strong lifting systems for the semi-liquid sediment. The mining system for polymetallic nodules would probably consist of a remotely operated nodule collector, a mining support vessel, a riser and lifting system, and a wastewater recirculation system connected to the mining platform for the discharge of sediment, discharge water, and erode nodule material. A second tube, part of the wastewater recirculation system, reaches to about one-third of the maximum water depth. So the collector machine would create a sediment plume while digging up the nodules, and a second plume would be created when discharging the waste sediment back into the sea. A large grey cloud is drawn behind the ROV and another at the outlet of the wastewater recirculation system. Questionable is if the unwanted sediment should be released mid-water column or back close to the seafloor. The ore containing slurry is dewatered and the residual sediment is pumped back to the sea. Mining massive sulfide deposits poses other challenges. They are often situated in areas with cumbersome topographical terrains, hindering the operability of remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, which cannot handle steep slopes. A remotely operated excavator drives up an extremely steep slope that separates two of the planes. The excavator is crossed out. Another difficulty lies in the location of inactive sites, since active sites have temperatures too high for mining. Text. Active sites. Up to 400 degrees Celsius. The rock in which polymetallic sulfides are found has strong similarities with coal. This means that coal mining techniques can be used as a basis to develop deep sea mining equipment. It requires significant force to extract this rock. An ROV, equipped with a circular blade, appears on the massive sulfide deposit at a depth of about 2,500 meters. To date, the only operational deep sea mining technique is used for polymetallic sulfides, the riser and lifting system RALS, designed by Technip for the Nautilus Mineral Solvara 1 project. A tube-shaped riser of the riser and lifting system is lowered from a production vessel on the sea surface down to the ROV. This method is very similar to the hydraulic mining system envisaged for nodule mining. Mining equipment on the ocean floor, for example seafloor production tools, collects minerals and crushes rock into gravel. A riser and lifting system pumps up the ore to a barge through a rigid tube called the riser. The mineralized slurry is pumped up to the surface. The ore is recovered by a production vessel, the production support vessel where the mineralized slurry is dehydrated before being transported to land. Seawater containing sediment and heavy metals is returned to the ocean floor through the riser and can supply the riser and lifting system pump with hydraulic power. This was it on exploration techniques and we hope you liked the video and if you have any questions or comments type them in the section below. We like to hear from you and hope to see you in the next video. References Online article published by Amundi in 2017 Opportunities of Deep Sea Mining and ESG Risks Report published by Ecoris in 2014 Study to investigate the state of knowledge of deep sea mining Study published by the Panel for the Future of Science and Technology STOA in 2015 Seabed Exploitation tackling economic, environmental and societal challenges. Thank you to Tristan Schwartau for designing the logo, a student's project which has been developed in the framework of the Ocean Sustainability Master Course of Kiel University and Geomar Kiel, 
under the supervision of Professor Dr. Martin Wisbeck and Dr. Franziska Werner. April to September 2020. Amelie Laute, Larissa Scholz, Ariane Tepas. The Exploration Explained logo appears.